Hello, welcome back to the Trekway. This is Lord Dick's uh, thoughts and opinions on season five, episode six. Um, I am joined by Grey Gamer twenty five, as always. Um, and we have literally just watched the episode, and we just went together literal raw immediate opinions. I think that's the way forward. Um, I well. I really, I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. Great, yeah, that's the, the short synopsis good. before we start. Are you the same? Yep, pretty much. It was pretty good. My my thing is, I finally see Doctor Tiana, which they waited way too long. You Five right episodes of barely seeing her, and now you know. Well, I'll go back to Doctor Cat anytime. <laughs> uh, or Doctor T. Doctor T, yeah, Doctor T. Or Mister T. T, but you know, Mister T. Um. It's all right. So we'll break down a couple of things, some kind of opinions, some funny uh, points that we usually do. So the kind of just of the gist of this episode is the Cerritos is kind of doing a little bit of peace brokering between two races, uh, the cubes and the orbs. Now, if this was not on Lord Dex, I'd be like, you're taking the piss, guys, because even in Star Trek, you don't get that ridiculous, right? But I can right. just about let it slide because it's Lord Dex that's really good. So they right. have to do this peace thing between them. They, they're playing up the cubes and the orbs against one another. Um, and they keep bitching and moaning the cubes and the orbs about things being either too pointy or too round or, yeah. you know, little silly, stupid things. Like that. What did you make of the cubes and the orbs? Are you like me, Gray, where you'd normally think it's ridiculous, but you'll let it slide because it's Lord Dex? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I felt it was a, a little ridiculous at first, but then after I started seeing what was, what they're trying to accomplish, uh, in the episode, it, it made for the the episode to be pretty funny. So, yeah. and there was a lot, there was a lot of good humor in this one, which was great. And for once they didn't really, I mean, they kind of had a second subplot, but not, it wasn't so interfering as to, again, the episode was more whole and more, more, just, just more of everything. It was just, it was, it was, it flowed nicely. The jokes were good, you know, and stuff. And so yeah. I, I love it when they do that. When they can do that properly, it's great. When they try to just cram too much stuff in, it just you lose it. This was good. It's, good. it's only twenty four minutes long an episode. There's no way you can have more than right. a plot and a subplot, uh, a push. You know, right. it's um, yeah, the little, lots of little funny lines. The cubes and the orbs, you know, like the little silly things that they don't like, like. One, um, I think the cubes didn't like Article Ten in the treaty because the the zero the of zero. the ten was too round. You know, a lot of stupid things like that. Um, so they have to try and broker this peace deal, uh, and it's not easy. At the same time, though, the kind of subplot is uh, a new ensign on board. Basically, she's a demigod, which, you know, you don't really see that really much in Star Trek, that, you know. I, I have not see, even seen that race mentioned since that, the original uh, TOS episode a What's long time ago. TOS episode, right. Got you. Yeah, and I was just like, well, because when I saw her wearing the, uh, the, the whatever they call it, uh, on her head, the flowery little ring, I thought it was just a headpiece. Yeah. Um, apparently we find out in the episode that this it's inherited and is actually attached to her skull. She can't just rip it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah so when yeah, I yeah. first saw it, I'm going like, oh, I've seen that before. And then, and then I, I actually ended up finding out it was referring to that episode way back. And I'm like, okay, because if I remember the episode, it's been a long time, but I thought that the, the, the Zeus guy or whatever was more of a, more of a, more of a construct or, or a construct created by a, a, some type of, machine or whatever i, I gotta right. go back and look at the episode so i didn't really think that was a real being per se um but to find out that i guess apparently it is i guess it was kind of interesting so yeah, that was yeah. a, that was an interesting twist i like how they throw little things in there where they they do a little research and then and mess with us she's she's essentially um the instance she's essentially like a descendant, or not a descendant, she's like the daughter of yeah. like the Zeus character or something like that, so she is demigod. So I'm thinking immediately, like, maybe she's pals with Thor, because he's a demigod, something. you know, maybe they go to the same kind of demigod kind of bar or something, you know? Yeah. Um, And I'm thinking, oh, what kind of powers and stuff she, has she got? Because, you know, demigods kind of what 
part God or something, not full, full uh, God, but like partial God. And she's on board. She's not doing well. She's trying to, she's working in engineering. And she's trying to do things to improve efficiency um, and systems and whatnot. And she keeps making an arse of it. And you notice at the start, some kind of electrical outburst from her, which yeah. I didn't click until later on, despite her yeah, being yeah, I was like, the daughter of Zeus. Yeah. Like, like, really? That, I thought it was like maybe from the things she was trying to manipulate or the, the pad in her hand, but no, it was actually from her. And she keeps making an arse of it to the point where we're like, okay, we're going to have to boot her off the suit or she's been on six ships already, like this won't work. But Mariner sees something in her, She's like, let, let me take her under, she's a lieutenant now, isn't she? So let me take yeah. her under my wing. And, uh, you know, I, I was once like that. Maybe I can help her out. And then she does kind of try and help her out a little bit. But yeah. it doesn't help that one of the cubes and one of the orbs disappears. One of the cubes is, uh, they see like residue inside one of the um, uh, the quarters, yeah. which we'll get to later on. It and looks like think, a splattered oh. cube on a wall. It's just like, Huh? We think, yeah, it's like maybe been vaporized or something, you know, and that's what's left of it. And we thought maybe one of the orbs has has done it. So they the corner one of the orbs in a kind of very detective style oh, yeah, wait, way. I get it. She, you cornered one of the orbs. Oh, you know? oh no! The episode was uh, full of stuff like this. Where the, there was one scene, the uh, um, the captain was walking down the hall. And she said that the orbs told her if they could get rid of the edges on the ship. Yeah. And she's going, yeah. you know how many edges are on a starship? That was great. So was like, okay. No one does. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are little lines of light. But I keep putting those little one-liners in there. Um, so, yeah, they do their kind of detective thing on her. Well, the, 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 the ensign does. It's just going a little bit gung-ho. And yeah, I'll kinda, the orb is a little bit freaked out and kind of makes a break for it, making itself look guilty. But they go chasing after it, and, you know, uh, Mariner's like you know you need to chill like you're, you're going a bit too much and then they start their little detective thing looking for evidence mm-hmm. they do find evidence in uh, the, the cubes uh, sorry the the, the, the orbs, orbs I'm getting confused the orbs no, quarters yeah. right that maybe kind of makes it look liable and guilty um, and it's getting a little bit silly at this stage but that's why we love it Grace it's low deck <laughs> humour isn't it um mm-hmm. We're big fans of that. Um, so, we, what we there is actually maybe a little small bot C. We can't forget the the boiler thing. Now, the reason yeah. he's been growing all this beard and stubble and stuff is, as we kind of thought, he wanted to look like his mirror self, um, yeah. the one that's been like captain or acting captain so many times and has like the full facial hair and is so confident right. and great. And he's got a little data pad from the other universe that everyone knows about. That he thought he kept it a secret. Yeah, he's kept it a secret like, all this time. Everybody knows like, it. Yeah, he's like, we, we can tell. It's like a little bit thinner. And it's red. You haven't noticed it's red. Oh, yeah, it's red as well. Different yeah, nobody color. notices. It's a bright red, but no one notices. They go, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> he's, he's flipping through it, and no pun intended. Um, and then he gets to the bit where he sees an interaction with his alternate self and Dr. Tiana, um, your favourite character, or my favourite character as well, to be okay. fair. I said, like, the, the, the pals, how do we become, I want to be pals with the, the doctor, you know, doctor's cool. And there was, he's nicknamed Flip. He's nicknamed Flip, so he goes down to the med centre, the, the, the sick bay, trying to, well, he just, you know, he keeps saying Flip, Flip, Flip. You say Flip one more time, she says, I will literally knock the shit out of you. Yeah, um, the bleeds are coming. She, she does literally one point go nuts, and like, right, you know, I've I've had I've had enough of this stuff. Um, but wait, 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 let's back up a second. The fun, the funnier part, or the funniest part in that whole thing, was that Boimler decided, how am I going, how am I going to get in with uh, Doctor Tiana uh, so well that this will work, and I'll become what the other person was. And he goes, and he starts analyzing stuff, and he goes like, oh, I just I got to start talking her language. And I'm sitting there going, I'm thinking, like, what, cat language? And he goes, then they go, no, cursing. Yes. So, he goes, so it was great. Boy, when he goes in there and he starts calling her an F and this and a mother F and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're flipping all this stuff out. So and you call and, me what? 
And we're sitting there thinking like, oh, that's going to be interesting. Like Tana would either go for it or or not. And she yeah. didn't go for it. And she's going like, what? And everybody in, the, everybody in the sick bay, all the people working in sick bay, all go, oh. And they all start looking. And Tiana's going, what did you call me? <laughs> and then she rips them apart with her claws. <laughs> Poor boy, there's like these pieces of his clothes are flying everywhere, and he's sitting there going like, "Oh!" And then she curses and swears even more as she's doing that. Yeah. Like, beep beep, the bleep the bleep machine is going in overdrive. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, God, yeah. I would, I would love to see them put that scene out with all the bleeps gone, and all the all the real words in there. I would be so hilarious. It would be, it would be even funnier than than it was. Why do you even bleep? I think they do it on purpose because, you know, because they're sworn and so forth. Other, yeah, kiss some no, kids No, 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 it's not Prodigy. That's an adult um, show. Mm, that it's yeah, like... but kids still watch it. I mean, so they want to be a little whatever. But I don't see why they couldn't come out with a, with the, the R-rated version, so to speak. I mean... True, it's more work, time and money to do that. That's why two versions of a show. Um, but, but it yeah, isn't I'm really, you. because from what I understand, and maybe I'm wrong, but from what I understand is that the actors actually did do all the curse words for real oh, yeah, you and have because to. and the reason they did it for real is because they needed to get into the emotion of it and so they sit literally went back and just just bleeped them out so we know the recordings are there so it wouldn't take too much just to drop the recording in there you know without the bleeps that, man i to man i don't know it's somehow I, it kind of works in a weird way um yeah but yeah no the pure pure boiler is literally Getting his arse absolutely kicked um, yeah. with Tiana, so it doesn't work too well. Um, we 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 proceed on with we get vibes of, as I said to you, Star Trek Six: Undiscovered Country, where the ensign and and, and Mariner are going about looking for evidence, mm-hmm. and and it's not going too well with things, you know, like because one of the cubes and one of the orbs have disappeared, the two think that. There'd be both races think they've been accused, and they literally just right go, they lose their ship, and right. they go basically they all come out of the ship and they turn into a giant orb and, and a giant cube, cube, and they start like just blast each other. And I'm saying to Gray, well, Sritos is taking a pound in the ship because oh, they blast each other in the ship before going out, and they're gonna blast each other as mega like shapes. And I'm like saying yeah. to Gray, like get out and waste Sritos. Like they don't seriously, even move. they just sit there, like. Right. Yes, they've been pum- they've been pummeled. They're probably lower low in power. But come on, man, you got thrusters. Thrusters are gas operating. Just fucking move, man. Just get out of the way. Like, oh, it's yeah. a silly thing. It's a, it's a it's cartoon. A, it's, it's like we haven't mentioned this in a long time, but it, but I always refer to it as cartoon logic because they just when they want to yeah. get away with something, they kind of just do it. And, when and they don't kinda... do that, they don't do it the live stuff often because they know they can't get away with that. Exactly. They have to explain exactly. it, don't they? Yeah. Um, so that was kind of epic. And then, it, just as they thought, it's not going to go any further with uh, the 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 ensign, who we actually find evidence in her locker about yep. the about the orbs, and she just explains, "Listen, I kind of dropped in them. I, um, I saw the mess, uh, the accident in the quarters with the the the, the, the cube, and I kind of had evidence because I knew everyone would blame me." Mariner dropped that a bit too easy, I thought. But, you know, yeah. again, cartoon logic. I'm not going to go with Grey. Um, and then the two of them are kind of like pals again. They um, they actually look like they're both going to get thrown off the bridge, Mariner and the Ensign, until the Ensign goes, well, listen, I actually do know some engineering things. So she has a great little trick of, basically, let's tractor both of them. Um, the giant cube and the giant orb. And like, literally, let's at the same time suck some of the energy from them which will depower them and actually get our shields back up and running which is smart yeah i get it it's cool um and they do that at the same time and they depower the orbs and the cubes and then just as they're about to you know i think was it orb of the square that said listen we don't or the cubes we don't need power to be uh, prepared to be bounced upon or something (laughs) exactly (laughs) And they're trying to like bounce on each other, anything they can do, even without power. It was, oh, it was, it was funny. funny. Yeah. It's that dry sense of humor, man. I'm just, I, I love it, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, literally, as they're about to have a square goal with one another, see what I've done there. Um, yep. 
a little tiny, the, the, the missing square uh, cube, sorry, and the missing uh, uh, the orb come come through. And they'd be like, yeah, we've been like just making love and getting together and having a thing. And, like, and everyone's like, what the hell? You've been making out? Like, no, come on. Like, mortal enemies. Like, yeah. And, and, and by the way, I don't know about the other people, but I, that was broadcast to me right away when I started hearing about that it was a guy and a girl and an orb and a cube and they both disappeared together. I'm going, yeah, here comes the boyfriend girlfriend thing. Yeah. I didn't yeah. expect it. I wasn't expecting a kid, though, right? right I, I don't think, but. And ended up we see a kid, and then of course it looks like a, a cube on the top and a and an orb on the bottom, you know. And and what I thought was funny though is when the kid when the kid was like making comments to the to the uh, orbs and the cubes, the uh, and then he did something I forgot what it was. But the father, <laughs> the father shit. cube goes like, "What's going on? I've only been a parent for five minutes." <laughs> yeah, it basically shits. It basically shits, so he doesn't know what to do with that. What's even um, funnier is that apparently the kid was born five minutes ago. Very speed, a uh, very speedy reproductive system. Yeah. Um, as humans are very slow with their repro- uh, reproductive systems, <laughs> mate. Nine months is on the longer side, actually. Um, yeah. So no, it was it was pretty amusing. That I must admit, um, the, the 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 orbs and the cubes actually find the little kid kind of adorable. So that's he saved the piece, yeah. um, which is good. But with Boimler still trying to be pals with uh tiana uh it doesn't kind of it kind of works out in a, in a good way because as there is a square go inside before they turn into mega orb and mega cube there's like firefight between the two races with their energy yeah. weapons inside and uh the ensign has to use her god powers or demigod powers like those powers go up and try and depower them all and she kind of does a bit but it kind of backfires. She stores too much energy. She has to let it all go. And it's all the lightning bolts that come out of her, like, like Zeus. Because yeah. earlier on, she does it in the episode, if you remember, she was like, yeah, like, demigod, I tried to hide yeah. this stuff. And she, she kind of, you know, does what Zeus does with the uh, electricity, yeah. turns it into a lightning bolt. But then the a lightning limp. bolt goes flaccid. <laughs> a limp lightning bolt. A limp lightning bolt. when the ones fell out of the sky, when she, when she, would, she had to let all the power go, all of them were, were limp and flaccid. They're all just like... <laughs> but not the one that hits Boimler later exactly, on. Yeah, literally, exactly. it hits some in the arse. Right, literally yeah, gets yeah. lodged in there, and it just pans back to Tiana. It's as if one of these shots where they don't change much because for yeah. drawing cartoons, it's, it's time time uh, and it's expensive to do that. Yeah. And it's literally, she's just sitting there like that, kneeled beside him, staring at this lightning bolt coming to his arse. He just said, oh, what to do? Oh, I like man. Just when they start, she has to operate. All of a sudden, like they have like semi serious music going on, and she's grabbing mm-hmm. all these freaking different tools and crap. Some of the dab in the sweat. Yeah, oh, yeah. And she's pulling these pieces of lightning bolt out of his butt. It's like, what is... and she's holding him down. And this is ultimately how she becomes friends with him because she's sitting there going, like, how that this procedure's never been done, and that she she's going to call it the Tiana procedure. Or something like that, and that she's going to get recognized by the medical community, and so all yeah. of a sudden now she's happy with Boimler because of this happening. It tells him, "Hey, listen, come to the book club I do," which is already funny in its own way. Can you imagine yeah. she's doing a book club of what? <laughs> yeah, and and his new nickname, which we can't really say here, um, but it's basically F U C K O. Yeah, and yeah, I see. Yeah. I see his new nickname going forwards. Uh, you've got a nickname. It's not Flip, but it's F U C K O instead, uh, which yeah. is which is for it. So that is. Listen, we hadn't seen much of Doctor Cat. No, and that was uh, a bummer. You've got, me was... Do, you've got me doing it as well, Gray. Now Tiana, Christ, yeah, yeah. Doctor T. Uh, no, Doctor Cat in it... the first five episodes, except a teeny bit. Was it, was it worth it... the wait? Well, I'm only going to say it's worth the wait because really I love the though. character, but she no, really they good. waited way too long. I mean, halfway through no, the but, season. But, but it was really good this to make up for it. It was good. No? It was good. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she was letting loose with a whole bunch of shit. I'm just, I'm seeing her rolling. I'm laughing so when much. She's, she's going, you please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she's calling and scratching them and she's <laughs> going, meow, and making this cat screeches. And she, was like, she was like doing WWE moves on him, too. She was coming oh, down yeah, like she the, jumped up when it was yeah, elbow, elbow man. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's how that has to heal him right after, so it's, it's the whole point. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was listen. That was really really amusing. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, a really good episode. I enjoyed that. What would you give it out of ten, Gray? 
I'm I, I willing to go with a nine. They did a really good job on this one. I mean, even though they followed a couple, maybe two other plot lines, it wasn't so much that you were getting distracted. It all just kind of Warped. blended in very nicely to everything. You didn't feel like yeah. you were rushed, or you didn't feel like you were being like, huh, what, what, what? You yeah. know, yeah. we've seen episodes where we, you and I were going like, well, well, well wait a minute. See, you yeah. can have three or four plot lines technically, Gray, right? Although it's difficult to do in 24 it's minutes. It's very difficult but to do, but because but they pulled you need it a off. Good, you need a good writer to link them all right. together seamlessly, don't right. you? right. And I think it has problem. a lot to do with the writers. It also has a lot to do with the directing and, and et cetera. But this is the way it should be done. This is the, when, when they're at their best and they can do it like this, it's so much more enjoyable. Oh, you yeah. Know, yeah. And, the, and you can tell the quality is, is up a notch when they're, they're all clicking on cylinders. So it's, you know, yeah. firing all cylinders, great. Yep. Well, whatever. Or orbs or cubes. Or orbs or cubes. Any yeah. shape you want. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. I'm waiting for the uh, triangle to show up next time. Oh no, the that'll bits. be that. Oh, that'll be the third race or something. Wait, you see. Um, <laughs> no, I, I would give it a nine out of ten as well. Uh, almost perfection again. That's two nine out of tens in a row. That is very well going. Um, mm-hmm. Gold decks, well done. Only four episodes left, which is a shame. But you yeah. know, we'll go out with a bang. Hopefully, um, we will be back, of course, next week. But we're going to maybe try and squeeze in a special next week on. The recent reunification special video from the Roddenberry archives uh, mm-hmm. that is uh, Gene Sun does. Um, the great thing he's got lots of content in there. A, a, a recent one that they've done uh, between basically Kirk and Spock, which is very very sweet. We'll just talk about that and give our viewer opinions on it, um, and that'll be with you like uh, Monday or Tuesday next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll sign off there. Great, thank you very much for that one, mate. And thank right. you for everyone that tuned in to listen and watch. We will see you soon. Uh, take it easy and say goodbye to people, Greg. Live long and prosper, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.